Hi, this is Dr. John Berghoff. In this video, I want to show how you can illustrate the operation of whole number division using manipulatives. The first illustration I want to, to do will use manipulatives called integer chips. This example will be very nice if you're dealing with relatively small numbers. Now, integer chips are nothing more than colored disks. Generally, we use black disks to represent positive numbers and red disks to represent negative numbers. So since I'm dealing with whole numbers, everything is positive, and that's why I'm choosing black chips or black disks, as you might wish. Some people use other colors, but I like black for positive and red for negative. Now, if I, what I have here, hopefully, is 13 of these black integer chips, and I want to illustrate 13 divided by 4. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to try to separate 13 chips into four piles with equal numbers of chips. If I do that, 13 divided by 4 will be the number of chips in each pile. Number of chips in each pile. Now, there's actually going to be a little bit more to that. So let me put a little dot, dot, dot there, and I'll explain what that means. So I have here 13 of these chips, and I'm going to count them into piles. If I were working with elementary age kids exploring division for the very first time, I would have them create their piles by kind of going around a circle and starting each pile with one chip. So here, this is the beginning of one uh, pile, second pile, third pile, fourth pile, and then go around again and add chips to each pile. Now I've gone around twice, go around again, add chips to each pile until I have no more chips left. And you will see if you look at these piles that there are three chips in each pile. So 13 divided by four will go, will, will go three times, but there is a problem. There's one chip that didn't fit. I can't add it to a pile because if I do, the piles will be unequal in size. This is what we call a remainder. So 13 divided by four, 13 chips divided into four piles will give you three chips in each pile with a remainder of one. So division often has remainders and that illustrates that fact. The terminology, when you do a division problem, the number you're dividing into is called the dividend. The number you're call, dividing by is called the divisor. The result you get, as in the number of uh, chips in each pile, is called the quotient. And there is potentially a remainder as well. Now, this works great, but I can take this farther and look at much larger numbers. Using the same approach actually has the wonderful effect of introducing long division. So this would probably be a higher grade level, um, but the process of dividing things into piles will introduce that algorithm in a very nice way. Now, I don't want to get 427 integer chips on the top on the on the table here and divide them into three piles. I'm going to shift instead to base 10 blocks. This is a tool we've seen before. And I'm going to represent 427 that way. 427 would require four flats. Remember, a flat is 10 units by 10 units, so 100 units in a, in a flat. Two longs, 420, and then 
seven individual units. There's 10 units in a long and then individual units to get up to seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just want to count that right so I don't mess it up. What I am going to do is attempt, just like I did with the integer chips, to separate this into four into three piles this time of equal size. This number tells me how many piles I want, the divisor, in other words. Many operations we do in mathematics, in fact, addition, subtraction, multiplication, we start with the smallest units and move to the larger. Division is actually easiest to start with the larger and move to the smaller. What I want to do is I want to take these blocks that I've created, and much like I did with the integer chips, separate them into three piles. I'm going to try to create as much space as I can. We'll come back to that later. And I would do very much like I would with the integer chips by asking my students to create three piles from what they see. And let's again say that we start with these flats and I create three piles, one pile, two piles, three piles. And then I have a problem. I've got this fourth uh, flat, but I can't fit it into another pile. This would not be a remainder, however, because what you can do is take that flat and exchange it for some longs, and then the longs can be split up farther. So I'm going to do this. Let me just slide my little pile over this for a minute and talk about just this one long. That long can be exchanged or traded, excuse me, that flat can be traded or exchanged for 10 longs. So I'm going to find enough longs To replace that flat, I need a few more. I'm gonna go reach into my toy bag over here and get me some more of these. Hard and reach. Okay, let me count, but I believe that's 10 of them. I see how that matches my flat. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good, I did it right. Let me get those out of the way. So instead of considering that flat, I'm trading that flat for all these longs. The flat goes away, don't need that anymore. And I can now start distributing my longs into these piles. And by the way, don't forget you already had two longs from before. So I'm gonna start taking my longs and doing the same thing. I'm gonna distribute them nicely and evenly to my piles and just go around the circle until I have no longs left. Just around and around and around and around. And I go one more time. And I see they are now all taken. So it is not necessary, it might be necessary to trade off an extra long if I had ones for some units and I could do that. So I distribute out my uh, flats into each pile and then my longs as far as I go and then moving from the largest shape to the smallest I finally get to my units and I count them around one unit each one unit each and guess what there is a remainder <clears throat> the result of the division will be the number of units in each pile with a remainder looking at the pile each pile has a flat one, two, three, four longs and two units. So that would give me 142 with a remainder of one. <clears throat> now, what I would like to do is I'd like to reset this the way it originally was and show you the, the process that I have gone through to divide this up into three piles is actually the standard long division algorithm just in physical objects. So I'm going to bring my flat back. So I'm back to 400 and 20. I'll get rid of all these guys. I have a really important reason why I want to go through this one more time. 400. So there's my 
four plats. You can see them there. 20, one, two, three, four, five. There they go, they kind of got out of the way. Now, let me begin a long division the way we're used to seeing it. The dividend is written up under a division symbol and the divisor is written into the left. What we usually say is look just at the first number of the dividend of, of the dividend and ask yourselves, ask yourself, how many times does three go into four? What that really is saying is take your four flats, because that's the hundreds place, and how many would be in each pile if you created three piles? Well, if you made three piles, there would be one in each. Now, there would be that flat left over. So let me show what happens there. This says that there's one in each pile. Three goes into four one time. If we look at how many uh, flats we've got in piles right now, there are three flats in piles right now. And that's one times three equals three. Then we know in our standard algorithm, what we do is we subtract the four and the three. What that is telling me is that we've got one flat left over. And when we bring down the two, what that's really doing is saying, let's now start thinking about the two, two longs but because I couldn't break up this flat into the piles, I'm replacing it with 10 longs. So as we move down, we're no longer thinking about flats, we're thinking about longs and the fact that we would have, there goes that one away, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <laughs> I just lost one of my units there. The 10 longs created with from the flats and the two brought down tells me I've got 12 longs. Then in my long division, when I divide the three into the 12, I'm really saying, okay, how can I divide these 12 longs equally into three piles? And now let me recreate my piles a little bit. That's getting off the screen a little bit. This is where by careful counting, I realized that there would be four longs per pile. And that's equivalent to what we say when we do the long division, that three divides into 12 four times. That's the four longs. When I multiply three by four, what that verifies is that I'll have no longs left to worry about. So there's no ones, there's nothing there. And then you begin considering your units, that's why you bring down the seven because now you're focusing on the units. And then you start splitting that up into the three piles and that's equivalent to asking how many times does three go into seven? And that would go twice. That represents the two units in each pile. Two times three tells me that I have put six units into piles and one more subtraction tells me that I have a remainder. So the long division is really a recreation of the physical act of splitting up these base 12 blocks into equal piles. And that's why I think this is a, a great and powerful way to motivate the long division process using physical kinesthetic objects. Now, this is less effective when you move to division by a higher number. Even if you use a higher one digit number, you end up with a lot of piles. So this is a good, a good starting place. If, if you use this method, choose your divisor to be something not terribly large, three, four, five, maybe something like that. It gets the idea across. And when you need to start dividing by two digit numbers, you really um, have to kind of rely on the fact that you are building, building hopefully on the confidence the students gained from looking at a fairly simple divisor and building from there. So for example, if I had 598 and I'd want to divide by 12, 
I probably would not illustrate this with 12 piles of blocks. It's just too messy. But I would sort of talk through the same process as I thought through the long division. My first thought would be, if I do divide this into 12 uh, piles, how many would go in each pile? And that would be answered by asking myself, how many times does, well, first of all, how many times does 12 go into five? If you had five, this would represent five flats. Could you divide five flats into 12 piles? No, you couldn't. So you'd have to break those flats up into longs where you're considering 59 longs and then asking yourself, could I split 59 longs into 12 piles? And that I think we'd have a better chance at. We kind of have to do sort of that guess and check kind of process we do with long division. I believe that will go about four times. Four times 12 is 48. That would tell me that my, my 12 piles would have four longs in each pile and I would have this difference left over, that'd be 11. There'd be 11 longs left over. I would have to uh, break those 11 longs into 110 units and bring in the other units. And then finally ask myself, how many times does 12, 12 go into 118? And I would have to make an estimate that maybe I might think, oh, you know, maybe that would go about nine times. And that would mean nine units in each pile. How close am I? What Would there be anything left over? Well, I would know that by multiplying the nine by the 12. Nine times two is 18. Carry the one. Nine times one is nine plus the one would give me 108. So dividing my units into 12 piles would re result in nine units per pile and there would be some left over. And my answer then would be 49 with a remainder, can't spell, remainder of 10. That's a little bit harder to do because I'm having to use my imagination. But hopefully the more simple division with the smaller divisor kind of gets people moving in the direction of thinking about a larger divisor. And then the long division process becomes more natural as you go. So I hope that is a nice way to connect division to something very concrete and kinesthetic using manipulatives.